Hi everyone, welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ILOPathology.com. Now in continuation with the diseases of breast series which I had uh, talked about in the earlier parts we had discussed about the normal anatomy and histology of breast, we talked about the epithelial hyperplasia, we talked about the benign tumors. From now on we will be discussing about the various aspects of carcinoma breast. Now in this part we will be talking about the various risk factors associated with carcinoma breast, the various types, the pathogenesis and the classification of carcinoma breast. Now, what is this carcinoma breast? This is the most common and deadly malignancy of the women globally. See, the incidence is around 4 to 7 times higher in the United States and Europe than elsewhere. But unfortunately, the worldwide incidence and mortality is increasing at an alarming rate. Now, if you have a look at the WHO website, okay, you can see that in the last five years, as, uh, as on uh, the end of 2020, there were 7.8 million women alive who were diagnosed with breast cancer, thus making the breast cancer as the world's most prevalent cancer. Not only this, there are more lot disability adjusted life years by women to breast cancer than any other type of cancer. Now, what are all the risk factors for the development of breast cancers? So, we can study these risk factors under these following headings. Gender, age, lifetime exposure to estrogen, genetic inheritance, environmental factors and other lifestyle factors. But before that, let us see if there are any factors which decreases the risk of development of breast cancer. Yes, there are. That includes early pregnancy have lesser chances of developing into breast cancers. People who prolong breastfeeding, weight control and avoidance of prolonged use of hormones and, avo and having good lifestyle modifications, you know, avoidance of alcohol, tobacco, all these are the factors which decreases the risk of development of breast cancers. Now, moving on to the factors which increases the risk of development of breast cancer, the first one being gender female gender itself is a strongest breast cancer risk factor because 99% of the cases the breast cancer occurs in females approximately around 0.5 to 1% of breast cancers occur in men. Now as age increases the incidence of breast cancer also increases. Younger the individual the occurrence of breast cancer is at lesser rates. Now, the, moving on to the third risk factor that is lifetime exposure to estrogen. So, this means the amount of estrogen being exposed by these women throughout their lifetime. Now, when does this you know, uh, exposure to estrogen increases? Increases when these people have early menarche and late menopause. Right. Second, nulliparity. First pregnancy being later than 35 years, these individuals have higher exposure to estrogen in their lifetime. Absence of breastfeeding is another risk factor. And of course, when you supplement the individuals with exogenous estrogen hormones, and these are also indicative of increased exposure to estrogen. The next one is genetic inheritance. If the individual has a very strong family history, particularly, you know, the first degree relative who is having a breast cancer or who have had a breast cancer, breast cancer in families, you know, in a relatively younger age groups, people uh, with multiple cancers in those families, all these are very strong determinants of occurrence of breast cancer in these individuals. So having a very strong family history itself is an independent risk factor, particularly when the mother or the or sibling or aunt having a very strong history of breast cancer. There is a concern that environmental contaminants such as organochlorine pesticides and certain plastics, you know, has been implicated in the uh, development of breast cancers because uh, it is said that these have very strong estrogenic effects on humans that may increase the risk of breast cancer. Of course, exposure to high dose radiation itself is an independent risk factor. Now, moving on to the lifestyle factors, people who are obese, particularly postmenopausal obesity, physical inactivity, and consumption of high alcohol are risk factors for the development of breast cancers. Now, all breast cancers can be separated into three major groups. How do you do that? Three major groups which are defined by the expression of two important proteins that is ER and HER2, estrogen receptor and human epidermal growth factor receptor 2, ER and HER2. Now, when ER is positive and HER2 is negative and these types of you know, breast cancers are referred to as luminal type of breast cancers. 
Second scenario where ER can be either positive or negative, whereas there will be overexpression of HER2 and these are referred to as HER2 cancers. Third one, when all the three receptors, the estrogen receptors, the HER2 receptor and the PR are negative and these are referred to as triple negative breast cancers or TNBCs. Now, why do we need to know this uh, molecular classification of breast cancers? That's because the luminal cancers you know, are the ones which peaks later in the life, whereas these two cancers, that is the HER2 cancers and the triple negative cancers, they plateau in the middle age. The luminal cancers are further categorized into two types that is luminal type A and luminal type B depending upon the proliferation. If there is a low proliferation, they are called as luminal type A cancers. When the proliferation is extremely high, they are referred to as luminal type B cancers. Whereas HER2 cancers, that's because of overexpression of HER2 receptor. And this overexpression is basically because of HER2 gene amplification. Okay, And good thing about HER2 cancers are that they respond very well to HER2 inhibitors. The third category, the triple negative breast cancers are often associated with defects in DNA repair or genomic instability. Now, as I told you, the incidence of breast cancer varies. It varies with ethnicity also. That means the highest incidence of breast cancers are seen in women of European descent and these breast cancers are most often luminal type, whereas other ethnic groups, you know, they are most commonly associated with the HER2 type of cancer and the triple negative breast cancers. Now, after, after having understood the uh, risk factors, various risk factors associated with breast cancer, let us move on to understand the pathogenesis of breast cancers, which can be further understood by these three headings. One is the genetic uh, you know, pathogenesis, the hormonal influence and the environmental factors. Now, what is this genetic? The mutations which contribute to breast carcinogenesis, they are referred to as driver mutations. And the mutations can either be inherited mutation or acquired mutations. Now, let us understand the various genes involved in the breast cancer. The first one is the BRCA1, breast cancer 1, BRCA2, TP53, PTEN and again lastly HER2. The BRCA1 and BRCA2, these have a very important function basically during the repair of double-stranded DNA breaks. TP53, you all know that this is a guardian of genome. P10 is an important negative regulator of the pro-growth pathway, pi 3 kkt pathway. And HER2, these promotes cell proliferation and opposes apoptosis. So we know that HER2 amplification is the one which is implicated in the development of breast cancers, particularly the HER2 cancers. Now let us understand more about BRCA1 and BRCA2. See, combined, these two are responsible for around 80 to 90 percent of single gene familial breast cancers and around 3 to 6 percent of all breast cancers. Now, BRCA1 is markedly, these individuals, apart from having breast cancer, they also have markedly increased risk of development of ovarian carcinoma to the tune of around 20 to 40 percent of carriers. Most often, the breast cancers associated with BRCA1 muta gene mutation are commonly poorly differentiated and they fall in the triple negative breast cancer subtype. Whereas BRCA2, it is also having a smaller risk of development of ovarian cancer, that's around 10 to 20 percent of cases. Whereas, I mean, as compared to that of BRCA1, BRCA2 gene mutation are associated more frequently with the development of male breast cancer. They are also poorly differentiated, but they are more often ER positive than BRCA1, which means ER positive breast cancers are luminal type of cancers as we just studied, right? So BRCA1, they fall in triple negative breast cancer subtype, whereas BRCA2 gene mutation, they fall under luminal type of breast cancers. Now moving on to the hormonal factors, the most important uh, hormone implicated is the estrogen itself. We know that estrogen stimulates the production of various growth factors that is transforming growth factor alpha, platelet derived growth factor, fibroblast growth factor, etc. And all these growth factors, you know, they stimulate the proliferation of breast epithelial cells during puberty, 
menstrual cycle and pregnancy so it's all the more uh, you know relevant that whenever there is increase in estrogen level everything gets proliferated so estrogen also drive proliferation during the development of cancer from the precursor lesions if the individual is having a precursor lesion and these individuals when they are exposed to more estrogen it proliferates i mean it helps in the proliferation or it helps in the progression of precursor lesion to a full blown malignancy so all these while we talked about genetic cancers right so when we talk about sporadic cancers the most important risk factors for sporadic cancers in women are estrogenic stimulation and age so when i talked about the development of cancer from the precursor lesions these precursor lesions particularly if they strongly express estrogen receptor they are the ones who are more prone to the development of cancers and these are often luminal type of breast cancers the third one is the environmental uh, factors there are various geographic influences we talked about various you no know, some uh, implication in the form of exposure to the pesticides sometimes high dose radiation exposure and of course other lifestyle modifications so now how do we classify breast cancers breast cancers are broadly categorized as non invasive type of breast cancer and invasive type of breast cancer so the non invasive ones are in simple referred to as carcinoma in situ which are further uh, categorized as ductal carcinoma in situ and lobular carcinoma in situ the invasive cancers the most common invasive breast cancer is the typical invasive ductal carcinomas okay so these type of cancers includes all carcinomas that are not of a special type they are count around 70 to 80% of cases so when we say this is not of a special type all the other cancers are of special types what are those special types invasive lobular carcinoma the incidence is around 10 to 15% carcinoma with medullary features around 5% of cases mucinous carcinoma also called as colloid carcinoma it's around 5% of cases tubular carcinoma accounting to around 5% of cases other types of carcinomas like secretory carcinoma apocrine carcinoma and various other carcinomas they account to around less than 5% of cases now all these cancers the globular carcinoma with medullary features mucinous tubular others they all come under carcinoma which are of special type this cancer is invasive carcinoma which is nos type that means not otherwise specified type or not of special type so in this tutorial we talked about the various risk factors associated for breast cancer various types of breast cancer the pathogenesis of breast cancer and the classification in the next part of carcinoma breast we'll be discussing in detail about the ductal carcinoma in situ the lobular carcinoma in situ and in detail about the paget's disease of the breast or paget's disease of the nipple stay tuned if you have like this video hit the like button do comment Don't forget to subscribe and please do share if you find this video helpful. Thank you.